Okay, uh, I think we should start uh, this special session. Um, welcome to Kim GTC uh, Joint Carbon Neutral Special Session. Uh, this is Jumbom Kim. Uh, I'm a professor in the University of Technology Trois in France. Uh, today, uh, we will have some presentation on carbon neutral, and also we have discussion session in this special session. So uh, actually, Artemi will have the the organized, I mean, the first section. So I, but he is not here right now. So I think we should start. Following the program, the Park Sang Jin, uh, president in Kim, will have the welcome, uh, congratulation message. 안녕하십니까. 한국기계연구원 원장 박상진입니다. 오늘 한국기계연구원과 녹색기술센터 두 기관의 기후변화 및 정책 전문가가 머리를 맞대고 미래를 위한 논의를 시작하는 더 깊은 자리를 아시아 기술혁신학회에서 개최하게 되어 매우 기쁘게 생각합니다. 오늘 탄소중립 공동세션 개최의 뜻을 함께해 주신 녹색기술센터 정병기 소장님과 아시아 기술혁신학회 고영주 회장님을 비롯한 관계자 여러분께 감사드립니다. 아울러 오늘 탄소중립 의제와 혁신 전략에 대해 발제와 토론을 해 주실 전문가 분들께도 깊이 감사드립니다. 탄소 중립은 4차 산업 혁명에 이어 우리 시대를 관통하는 새로운 화두가 되었습니다. 세계 각국이 앞다투어 탄소 중립 달성을 선언하고 글로벌 기업들도 이 흐름에 동참하면서 에너지, 모빌리티, 산업 공정 등각 분야에서 탄소 중립 달성을 위한 기술과 정책을 다양하게 제시하고 있습니다. 특히 최근에는 글로벌 탄소 중립 달성에 있어 아시아 지역의 역할이 더욱 중요해지고 있습니다. 전통적으로 제조업의 비중이 높은 한국과 중국, 일본을 비롯하여 이란, 인도네시아, 카자흐스탄 등 탄소 배출량이 높은 국가들이 속해 있기 때문입니다. 이런 상황 속에서 열리는 오늘 학술 대회는 아시아 지역 고유의 탄소 중립 전략과 아시아 국가 간의 협력 방안을 모색하는 좋은 기회가 될 것입니다. 우리 연구원도 앞으로 한국을 대표하는 기계기술 연구기관으로서 2050년 탄소중립 달성을 위해 최선을 다하겠습니다. 코로나19 백신이 글로벌 공공재라는 인식을 얻었듯이 탄소중립 기술도 인류를 위한 공공재로서 국제적인 과학기술 협력이 더욱 공고해지기를 기대합니다. 끝으로 참석하신 여러분께 깊이 감사드립니다. 고맙습니다. Thank you for uh, the welcome message of uh, president in Kim. Uh, I think we, we can continue the presentation today. We have three presenters today. So the first presenter is Choru Kim in Korea Institute of Machinery and Materials. He will present uh, bottom-up international cooperation and innovation for achieving national carbon neutrality. Please uh, give him a big hand. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Choro Kim and I'm working in the uh, Kim. And uh, my presentation title is the bottom of international cooperation and innovation for achieving national carbon neutrality. Focusing on religion level government international cooperation of South Korea, China, and Japan. Chapter one is the background of this research. As you know, climate change is a supranational and supra-regional problem. Nevertheless, in Northeast Asia, mutual cooperation on climate change has not been performed properly. In 2020, major leaders of Northeast Asia declared carbon neutrality to actively respond to the global climate crisis. At first, China President Xi Jinping declared 2060 carbon neutrality on 22 September. And then Japan's Prime Minister Yoshida Suga declared 2050 carbon neutrality on 26 October. Next, two days after, Korea President Moon Jae-in announced the 2050 carbon neutrality on 28 October. In the mood, it is important to have a bottom-up system and platform that applies regional-based technologies and innovation rather than political slogans or debate central discussion. 
And next is the research content and scope. This study analyzed the carbon neutral policies at the level of a central government in Korea, China, and Japan, and for the sake of find out the implication of climate change response cases and carbon neutral policies of local government in each country. Two arch research objects described above, climate, cli climate technology policies and case analysis of the three country will be proceed and focus group interview will be conducted for high level expert from three countries. Chapter two is the methodology overview. From January to March, a preliminary survey on carbon neutral diplomacy and cooperation agenda between Korea, China, and Japan at the Chinese Embassy in Korea, the Korea Embassy in China, and the Japanese Embassy in Korea was conducted at least twice. After that, a FGI is conducted to the di diagnose the carbon neutral innovation agenda of the local government of the three country for mutual cooperation. And we set the following research question and attempts are made to drive the research result. Question one is at the international level, what is the state of the carbon neutral technology and innovation policies of the central government of Korea, China, and Japan? Question two is uh, what are the technological and innovation policies related to the carbon neutrality in Daejeon in Korea, Shandong in China, and Tsukuba in Japan? Question three is uh, what are the carbon neutral technology, technology and innovation policies of Korea, China, and Japan that experts perceive? Question four is uh, what are the carbon neutral technological and innovation cooperation plans between Daejeon, Shandong, and Tsukuba, then expert proceed. Question one and two derive research results by the analyzing police, and research question three and four present the policy implication and policy alternate through the FGI. The FGI was conducted in the Kim on April 23, with the 12 experts, including Ban Ki Moon and government officials at the director level or higher. Chapter three is the analysis of the carbon neutral innovation policy with the international community in Korea, China, and Japan. As you know, Paris Climate Agreement emphasizes the technology sector as its main content. In particular, the importance of the science and technology to actively respond to climate change through the technology development and transfer of the climate change response and the revitalization of international cooperation is emphasis. In Korean government, present a vision of promoting proactive response by the establishing a new economic and social development strategy in carbon neutral 2050 strategy. The policy is closely related to the LEDS which also affect regional science and technology policies and implementation plans. To achieve these, SNT policies are being carried out in direction of developing and commercializing innovative technology, and that will be dramatically reduce carbon emissions by sector in all stages of energy production, processing, distribution, and consumption. China also announced the carbon neutrality 2060 and present gradual goals, R&D, and innovation as solution. Chinese government proposed the following three goals. First stage is the control core consumption and post clean energy industry. Second stage is the focus on renewable energy and post electric vehicles. And third stage is the clean carbon emission technology is used in industry, power plant, transportation, and housing, and the application of CCUS and the BECCS is planned. The Chinese government carbon neutral innovation policies take into account China's economic development and technological innovation as 
as the world's largest carbon emitter. This can be said to be a ex <clears throat> expression of China's will to play a role, a game changer in the international community's movement to the revoke the climate crisis. And Japan declared the carbon neutrality 2050 and set the green growth as a national policy agenda and is promoting low carbon and hydrogen energy technologies. Therefore, Japanese government has set the following three core areas. And first key, sec first key sector is the energy sector. And the second is the tram transportation and manufacturing sector. And third is the home and office sector. And Japanese government declaration of the carbon neutrality is the evaluating to have been influenced by the changing in the domestic and international environment, especially <clears throat> it was <clears throat> influenced by the pursuit of carbon neutrality from the international community and the green recovery policy from Europe. Next chapter is the analysis of the carbon neutral innovation policies of the local government in Korea, China, and Japan. First, the Daejeon is a city in South Korea in pursuing R&D and collaboration, utilizing the abundant government funded research institute in the city. It's promoting a carbon neutrality four plus one strategy and four are the building, transportation and energy citizen and the one is the forest. Also in 2018, Daejeon established the Daejeon Metropolitan City 2030 Greenhouse Gas Reduction Roadmap. In this roadmap, they, they announced a plan to reduce about the 2.6 million tons from non-industrial parts in Daejeon by 2030. And Shandong is a leading industrial region in China. As of the end of 2017, Shandong <clears throat> Sandong government is conducting 23 low carbon fire city projects. Strategies such as low carbon transition in the industrial sector, energy saving management, participation in carbon market and the strengthening of the MRV on the greenhouse gas emission statics, etc., are suggested. And Chukuba is uh, similar to Daejeon. It is established a partnership for carbon neutrality within the city and is pro providing continuous education and conducting high tech R&D in the environment and energy sector. Especially is open, operate the 3E strategy supporting smart community, biomass, smart mobility, and the hydrogen energy. All three local government mentioned are the leading science role in the industrial cities of the each country. And it's mentioned that the collaboration between the research institute and university in these cities on technological innovation for carbon neutrality. Chapter five is the collaboration strategy for the Korean, China, Japan, local government focus on the FGI. First is the Daejeon, about the Daejeon, Expert C in the FGI says the Daejeon is the major science city in South Korea and Daejeon declared the motto, the low carbon city Daejeon, where life is healthy, aligning the global <clears throat> goal of achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. And for UCLG, the conference held in the Daejeon in 2022, establishing a platform is needed on the permit that the local government in China and Japan will proactively participate. Thus, it is crucial to understand the carbon neutrality innovation policies by local government in the three countries. Next, Sandong. About the Sandong, expert I says the Sandong is the carrying out carbon reduction policies for the carbon neutrality, such as the improving coal quality, increasing coal generation, extending the share of the renewable energy, establishing or managing the static platform for greenhouse gas, and the facilitating high quality industrial development through the restricting the size of the energy oriented industry. 
and about the Chukuba. And Chukuba is the pro providing continuous educational oppor opportunities and conducting high tech R&D in the in environment and energy sector in order, in order to the achieve carbon neutrality of the local government. Chukuba is also promoting technology and innovation policies centered on the smart community, biomed, smart mobility, and the hydrogen energy. And expert air says the collaborate, collaborative event is the possible among the local institute and university in three countries in East Asia. Especially right now is the time for the three countries where the manufacturing is important to share the manufacturing based carbon neutrality storage and the collaborate on the technology. And about the collaborate strategies, expert is says on the central government level, it is possible that the three country will establish an innovation technology fund as a collab collaborate effort on the carbon neutrality. Also on innovative partnership for ILDND, for carbon, neutral, carbon neutrality can be formed. And experts see suggest in China, every two wheel vehicles run with the elect electricity. However, South Korea is still using motorcycles that emit the proton. Also, South Korea and many Southeast Asian countries should learn from the Japan's environmentally friendly public transportation system. As a result of the research comparing the three countries, experts did notice that South Korea has a very advanced climate change portal website. So he hoped, to, he hoped Japan will adopt this system at its portal website to support the local actions by the local government. All participants agree that the carbon neutrality is a new strategy for the economic development also, there was a time when the economic development and the carbon neutrality were considered contradicting. And at expert A concludes with the anticipation for the Korea, China, and Japan collaboration, the bottom up collaboration of the local government and the local innovation can be a turning point in fight COVID 19 and climate change. Chapter six is a conclusion. In conclusion, the collaboration as follows are possible. In addition to the formal communication and collaboration between the countries, informal organization at the local government level can be made. This can be effective in the rule-oriented socialist government or inflexible governance. Through continuous communication and the collaboration, establishing Korea, China, Japan innovation platform for carbon neutrality will be made possible. Also, the three local government can establish a fund for the collaboration on technology and innovation to achieve carbon neutrality and form ILDND partnerships. Especially, the three local government can share best practice for the utilizing ICT for carbon neutrality and experience and technology in identifying air proton and col collaboratively conduct researches on the carbon reduction and renewable energy. Now, now is the time when we need the wisdom to identify problems together and collaboration on technology and innovation instead of the competition competition and the conflict for the long lasting journey toward the carbon neutrality. And next chapter is the edition chapter. Our introduce about the role of Kim on cooperation for carbon neutrality in the manufacturing sector. To realize the carbon neutrality, especially the international cooperation with the manufacturing oriented countries is essential. In the industrial field, it is necessary to carbon free and electrification and Im improvement of efficiency. As a practical method, electrification is a mainly discussed, discussed, but technological solutions such as how to replace the existing device and link with the renewable energy are required. 
and most of manufacturing industry in Korea, such as steel, cement, chemicals, and the display, mainly consume the heat source as the energy. And this is why we should interest in the mechanical and thermal energy technology. For carbon neutrality, it is essential to improve the efficiency and the eco-friendliness of the mechanical system used in various man manufacturing industry. So uh, my, my, my institute team has uh, set the development of the innovation technologies for carbon neutrality as its core role, such as the development of the clean environmental machines and the development of the low carbon and the thermal energy machines technologies and has contributed to the spread of the industry. And we set the Kim's three plus one strategy for the carbon neutral. And our vision is the leading green machine technology for the carbon neutrality in 2050. And we set the three main directions and first is the low carbon and clean energy infrastructure technology. And second is the mechanical technology for the energy conversion and electrification. And the third is a mechanical technology to increase energy efficiency. For each direction, we set the six relevant fields of the technology. We, and we also set the consolidation of the foundation. And we also plan to start the East Asian Carbon Neutral R&D Cooperation Program through the manufacturing innovation. Thank you for this my presentation and thank you very much. Artemi, you can take the, yeah. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kim. Uh, and my sincere apologies to everyone for uh, some technical problems in uh, logging into the room. Uh, my name is Artemi Izmestiev. I'm the former policy specialist at the UNDP Seoul Policy Center. Uh, I spent uh, over 10 years uh, in Korea and very glad to be uh, virtually back into this very interesting discussion. Uh, so, um, good afternoon to uh, everyone in uh, Jeju in, in the hall and good morning or good evening, uh, depending on where you're joining from. Uh, I would like to thank um, Mr. Kim for, for excellent presentation. And I think it shows, uh, first of all, that the local government is really the uh, important stakeholder uh, in, uh, um, in the climate neutrality. Uh, and I find it extremely fitting that this discussion is actually taking place in Jeju, uh, the, uh, the physical discussion, because Jeju is one of the local governments that has very ambitious plans um, related to the carbon um, neutrality. And, and we can see from the presentation that there are some significant similarities, but also there are some significant differences. And this is exactly what uh, I think makes it uh, very uh, um, uh, attractive for promoting this kind of cooperation. And of course, uh, thanks a lot for suggestion of some very concrete um, uh, ideas uh, on how this type of collaboration can be promoted through the joint fund or through spe special attention to some specific areas. Um, so yeah, once again, thank you, uh, Mr. Kim. Uh, now, without further ado, I think we, we need to move to the second presentation. And this reminds us that uh, carbon neutrality is a universal agenda, an agenda that uh, not only includes uh, developed countries, but also developing. Uh, and uh, technology um, cooperation is going to be pivotal for um, achievement of uh, these goals uh, worldwide. Um, and uh, therefore, I'm really glad that uh, we have uh, Sang Jun uh, John from InfoShare uh, today um, uh, to uh, give us the perspective uh, uh, of the startup uh, working in this area. And uh, InfoShare began developing the fine dust measuring instrument starting uh, 2017. Uh, and uh, as of uh, this year, its product completed verification by uh, receiving the first grade um, in the Ministry of Environment's fine dust measurement standard. Uh, so uh, over uh, to you. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am Sung Jun Jeon, CEO of InfoShare, uh, which is a software R&D company in Korea. 
I'm here to present carbon neutral research activities of InfoShare. This, this presentation is largely divided into three parts. The first thing is the background and necessity of uh, research activities. The second is the research activities. The third is expected expect. And then finally, the presenter's experience. Uh, first, I will present the background and necessity of InfoShare's research activities. I'm sure um, many of you are deeply interested in the carbon neutrality and are uh, aware about the relation uh, between carbon neutrality and uh, climate change. Due to global warming, the abnormal climate are occurring all around the world and transition to a carbon neutral society uh, is required to curb the rise of global temperature. But uh, did you know that the various policies and the measure discussed for carbon neutral are in line uh, with solving the problem of a particular methods? Uh, particul particulate methods is closely linked to climate change and carbon neutrality. Uh, let's take a look at the relationship between air pollution and uh, climate change. The particulate matter is caused by a variety of reasons, uh, which include automobile emissions and uh, power plants. Uh, these also are the cause of greenhouse effect. Greenhouse gases trap the sun's heat resulting uh, climate change. Uh, climate change increased air pollution leading to a uh, repetition of uh, a vicious cycle. Uh, there are various solutions being applied to solve, solve the particulate matter issue, such as the adaptation of low emission vehicle, reduction of positive fuel power, power generation, and preven uh, prevention of illegal incineration of uh, uh, agriculture's waste. And you would notice that all these measures are very much in line with the uh, uh, realization of carbon neutrality. With this in mind, the InfoShell has been conducting uh, carbon neutral activities uh, through the accurate measurement and the management of uh, particulate matter. In addition, InfoShell's the particulate matter measurement device development activities also have a goal of protecting people. Acknowledging the uh, seriousness and adverse effect of a particulate matter, InfoShare has been trying to protect the vulnerable uh, population from air pollution. Next, I will introduce you to InfoShare's research activities for the uh, realization of carbon neutrality and zero uh, particulate matter. Okay, <clears throat> starting from uh, 27, we have been developing particulate matter measurement device and commercializing them. Uh, the measuring device have undergone repetitive <clears throat> modification and are currently in their post generation now. As a part of a study to reduce particulate matter, InfoShare has participated in the 2020 I4PS contest and began to attract worldwide attention by winning the uh, grand, grand prize with our device. In the contest, uh, InfoShare proposed a real-time particulate matter mapping service, which measures particulate matter in real time by adapting device on mobile vehicles such as buses and taxis. And this year, uh, InfoShare signed a strategic business agreement like uh, MOU uh, with a Danish company, Pure City, uh, which owns uh, air purification system technology. And uh, throughout the uh, technical cooperation, we will explore a new carbon neutral market. 
In the same year, uh, Ingoshare successfully uh, acquired the first grade of performance, the certification uh, from the uh, Ministry of Environment, the particulate matter measurement standard. However, uh, Ingoshare's challenge are uh, far from over. Uh, starting from 2022, we plan to promote the development uh, measurement device for the total amount of expo exposure to hazardous gases and particulate matter. We will also conduct research on the reduction of them as well. Uh, we intend to secure export channel uh, through the uh, cooperation with the Danish company, uh, Pure City. So lastly, I will uh, explain the expected expect of our research activity. InfoShare's research activities are expected to lead to various uh, effects. In technology aspect, we will be able to uh, provide detailed uh, particulate matter information to researchers and developers who are in the uh, field of air quality. This will also enable us to promote technology development related to particulate matter reduction and carbon neutrality. In industrial and social aspect, we plan to reduce the managing uh, carbon emission uh, through uh, particulate matter management measurement. By doing so, uh, it can respond to climate change uh, so uh, accurate identification of the state status of uh, air pollution. Lastly, uh, social uh, losses regarding health and social welfare will be reduced uh, through uh, preemptive uh, prevention. Uh, this is the uh, end of the presentation. Thank you for your time. And if there are any question, I would uh, be pleased, pleased to answer them. And if you have any further inquiry uh, after work, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, this, uh, here is my email address and phone number. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Mr. Uh, John, for this extremely interesting presentation. I was particularly interested to see the link with uh, climate, um, um, climate issues. Uh, it would have been extremely interesting to discuss the issues of commercialization. I, I personally would be very interested to, uh, to discuss that. Uh, but we are running a little bit behind time. Um, so maybe some of these uh, issues could be addressed uh, further uh, during the discussion. Uh, so with this, I wanted to thank all the um, presenters for excellent presentations. And after the coffee break, uh, Professor Kim from the University of uh, Troyes um, is uh, going to take over for uh, the discussion. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we should start. It's time to continue uh, this carbon neutral special session. Um, this is Junbom Kim in University of Technology Troyes in France. I'm, it is my pleasure to have this, this uh, panel discussion uh, moderator. So today we have uh, four um, yeah, panelists. So first I wanna introduce uh, these four panelists first. The, the first one, uh, first panelist is uh, Sung Jun Jung, he, who already presented about the SME's um, activities. And second, uh, Panelist is Leon Yang. Yeah. Uh, she is a researcher in Green Technology Center. And then third uh, uh, panelist is Sunche Kim. Uh, he is a yeah, research fellow in KISTEP, Korea Institute of Science and Technology Edu Evaluation and Planning. And the last panelist is Soin Beck. He's a, a associate research fellow in uh, STEPI, yes, a Science and Technology Policy Institute. Please welcome uh, uh, this panelist. Okay, let's 
uh, Song Jun Jeon already uh, present uh, his activities, so we can continue. We can start from uh, Lee Wan Yang. Uh, she can uh, each panelist have five minute talk, and then finally, uh, after all panelists speak, talk, and then we can uh, have some active discussion and also question and free talk about their talk. Okay, Lee Wan Yang, you can. You can start. Thank you, Professor Kim, uh, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Ri Won Yang. I'm a senior researcher at Green Technology Center, Korea. Uh, my major research area is uh, climate technology cooperation, especially with, uh, with uh, developing countries. Um, and uh, I would like to thank for the opportunity to participate as discussant in, the, in this important session dealing with timely subject, which is the R&D for climate change. And I would also like to thank to the moderators for leading this session and for the present presenters on their interesting presentations. Um, I would like to speak a little bit about um, what has been presented uh, in relation with what I am actually doing uh, researching in my institute. Um, so the Paris Agreement set the goal of limiting the rise of global temperature by 1.5 degrees Celsius, as we all know. And the recent IPCC report also uh, stresses that it is absolutely necessary to achieve this uh, target, which we do not have much time left. And in order to do so, the Paris Agreement states the countries to set the long-term low carbon development strategy and many countries have since last year has anou have announced, announced the carbon neutrality uh, goal by 2050. So one of the tools that the Paris Agreement provides to achieve this 1.5 degree goal is development and transfer of technology as mentioned by uh, our, one of our moderator, Mr. Artemi, uh, between countries. And it stresses the importance of the support, including financial support, from the developed countries to the de developing countries. And to do so, Paris Agreement established technology mechanisms under which uh, countries could cooperate for the developing and transferring of the climate technology. Um, so addressing climate change is something that we should achieve together with the developing countries as they do, they have a double task of pursuing the sustainable green growth, as well as addressing the climate change impact. And Korea is actually not free from the historical responsibility since uh, Korea is 23rd largest CO2 emitting country when considering the cum cumulative CO2 emissions. In this context, the Ministry of Science and ICT of the Republic of Korea which is the national designated entity of the technology mechanism and Green Technology Center has actively participated in the technology cooperation by providing technical assistance to the Asian countries since 2018. However, while carrying out these projects, um, our research team um, has encountered a number of barriers which hindered the technology projects to move on to the next step unfitted technology for the local conditions, lack of trained technology experts for the operation or, uh, and maintenance, lack of bankability, low public awareness or low political will willingness, and legal and re regulatory barriers were the obstacles that we ident identified along the way. When we make an analogy of the technology uh, development to Commercialize, uh, commercialization process to with the technology cooperation process, the sum of this, these factors, these barriers makes the project impossible to cross the valley of death. Um, this valley of death could manifest in different stages of process and it could be a gap between R&D stage of technology to actual demonstration, or it could be a gap between demonstration to scale up or wide deployment of technology. Therefore, technology cooperation projects should be carefully designed from the beginning and 
adequate financing should be provided to bridge this valley of debt. And today's three presentations point out how to approach, how to design, and how to support the technology cooperation activity to bridge this valley of debt. Uh, in terms of how to approach, the first presentation shows us that the regional cooperation is especially important in two points. First is that it provides a forum for discussion to the relevant stakeholders who are directly involved in the cooperation. This would increase the ownership and strengthen the momentum to acquire the motivation of the stakeholders for the project, to actually carry out the project. The second point is that the presentation, the second point, point that the presentation shows uh, the case of a bottom-up approach, where it is the local governments that are directly engaging with each, each other, which was also pointed out by uh, Mr. Arkin. Um, we often start this discussion about cooperation from top down by starting the, the discussion from the uh, central government. However, when we actually carry out the project, we realize the actual beneficiaries are the local governments, and those are the ones responsible for the sustainable application of the technology on the project, actual project site. Therefore, developing policy agenda and identifying technology needs from the bottom up is crucial. And in this sense, the cooperation case of the Korea, China, Japan provides a benchmark case. The second presentation is on how to design the technology cooperation so that it does not fall in the pitfall of the Valley of Death. Understanding the local situation and the readiness of the local stakeholders and the local government are single most important task in designing the technology cooperation project. The readiness assessment framework was developed to undertake a rigorous analysis of the country's readiness before designing the project. We also considered a holistic approach to incorporate the technology into the society by considering institutional, regulatory, environmental, and social aspects, and also capacity building and awareness raising of the relevant actors. The results show that which uh, showed which are the weak points of the country in designing uh, the project, and we expect that this framework could be utilized in designing the project to minimize uh, the risks. The third presentation shows an inspiring technology development case, uh, actual, actual technology, uh, but it also provides us insight on how we should support the development stage technology to bridge the valley of that. It shows that the increase of incubation and acceleration fund or programs such as IROBS is necessary for the technology providers with innovative technology to prove the technology's applicability in the developing country situation. The role of funding, uh, public funding, such as government's r and project uh, budget or ODA program should be mobilized to support this purpose. So I would like to thank again to all the presenters for their insightful uh, presentations. And I expect that the takeaway of these presentations could uh, catalyze the r and cooperation activities to address climate change. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, uh, Liu and Yang. Uh, you well, uh, nice to summarize the three presentations and also you mentioned many, <laughs> many things. So thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I fully agree what you are saying. And then maybe after two more uh, panelists talk and then we can continue uh, discussion more. <laughs> Okay, and next uh, next panelist is Sun Jae Kim in uh, Kista. Uh, he will have a talk. Yeah. Thanks to presenters and the uh, organizers of this session, and also all participants. As we saw in the first presentation, uh, the importance uh, of international cooperation is very high because the issues of carbon neutrality crosses borders. Also, this is a new opportunity and task for science and technology. And I strongly agree that um, uh, the point uh, the presented here. And now I would like to point out that 
uh, the point, the factors that should be considered in terms of technology demand and budget investment. The first point is what carbon neutral technology really is. The reason why this is important is that the scope of technology reflects the country's future R&D direction and it affects R&D budget investment. In some cases, there may be technologies that is necessary uh, for sure or midterm, but it, but it is excluded from the future technology roadmap. Under the goal uh, of redu reducing greenhouse gas, various technology roadmaps are presented. In a way, the technology scope presented have in common. However, we can also observe that there are some differences in the scope of carbon neutrality viewed by each country and test stakeholders. In fact, in a broad sense, many of the global R&D currently on the way is already oriented towards eco-friendliness. For example, improving the efficiency of internal combustion engine or even faster energy, uh, developing new material, furthermore ICT, including autonomous driving can, can also be viewed as contributing technology to carbon neutrality. Therefore, the innovative energy transition should be carried out along with the step-by-step -step transformation of traditional industries as an extension of the ongoing R&D. As stated in the first presentation, policies aiming dramatically reducing carbon is very important. But at the same time, if there is not careful consideration of step-by-step -step strategy in a play, industrial reality may not be high. Also, international cooperation of technology should be carried out with a consideration of the level of technology readiness. And short-term, mid-term, long-term technology demand of each country. Carbon, neutral, carbon neutrality is a, a more challenging task for the developing country, where manufacturing and resource development is highly concentrated. So implementation plan that carefully consider the present state situation of each country and each industry is requested. So, this is about my um, talk. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sanjay Kim. Uh, you, you really um, point out the very important things. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a right. It's a trend uh, to traditional industry. They, have, they cannot have you know, dramatically uh, carbon reduction and uh, approaches. So step-by-step, step, approach is very important for a specific industry. So I, I, I think so, uh, some industry can reduce uh, carbon amount dramatically, but some uh, types of industry, they cannot reduce carbon uh, amount dramatically. So each industry has different uh, characteristic and approach we need, I think. So thank you for your nice talk about that and next presenter next uh, panelist yeah is uh Soin Beck in Steppy. yeah you are on the store my name is Soin Beck i'm an associate research fellow at Steppy. and first of all thank you very much for this opportunity and also thanks to organizers and presenters and also other two panelists i just like to um, point out some point to conduct discussion. Uh, I think the two uh, point is very important for uh, carbon neutrality. Uh, one is technology cooperation and one other, uh, the other one is technology sovereignty. And from the technological cooperation view, I think uh, also have three points is very important. Uh, first is similarities and differences between regional cooperation and global cooperation in carbon neutral R&D policy. And secondly, I think uh, to discover the cooperation area, uh, for example, standard or infrastructure and so on, 
and the process way we uh, cooperate, uh, for example, uh, co R and D or something else, uh, in line with each country's national plan, are the most important and critical issues for carbon neutral R and D policy. And lastly, I think cooperation in East Asia um, is uh, very uh, promising, but it's very hard and also have very large impact on SDGs. So this uh, issues is very important. Um, from the technological sovereignty view and security issues, uh, I think uh, we have two points to uh, looking at. First one is uh, value chain resilience and also cyber security issues. For example, some hacking uh, on uh, critical infrastructures and in energy and carbon neutral technology as well. And the other one is technology, technology and digital and innovation sovereignty issues during cooperation. So for example, whether uh, you or a company have a certain type of technology or not is very important and critical for uh, technology sovereignty in carbon neutral issues. And this is the end of my uh, discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you for uh, your nice comment. Uh, you, you mentioned regional cooperation, global cooperation is very important. Yeah, I fully mm -hmm. agree. So you, usually I, I'm working in France, so I usually see the European uh, approach there. They have really uh, good funding uh, partnerships and they are working together. And so for one European project, we need six or seven countries partners and then we should try one funding. European funding. Also, Asia also need this kind of funding partnership together and maybe uh, Asian countries can work together for carbon neutrality and um, climate change issues, problems. So thank you for uh, three, uh, four yeah, panelist talk. And let me uh, have, let me start. <laughs> Uh, from me, I have some questions and also maybe Artemi also can have comment and other also panelists can have comment and answers. So, um, uh, Yang Li Wan, Yang Li Wan Yang mentioned a very important point. So I have some question about the unfitted technology for the local condition and lack of trained technology export for operation management so yeah, in, in Europe also many researchers are working on low tech and appropriate technologies and researches. So do you have any uh, real examples of the local, I mean, unfitted technology for the local conditions and lack of trained technology, expert, lack of bankability? Could you share us some, some examples? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I can think of a couple of uh, projects that I've conducted um, over the years, but the most uh, simple um, example that comes up to my mind is that uh, we, we conducted a desalination project in Bangladesh, especially for the coastal areas of the Bangladesh. And, um, the, we brought uh, a number of we we took a number of options of technology such, such as um, RO technology or like filtering technology with a, a multiple filters in it and with those uh, technologies we could actually desalinate the the water uh, in the region with uh, to up to the drinking uh, drinking water level. However. The problem was that there, um, in the coastal area, the in fact the electricity is not uh, sufficiently provided. So, uh, as we all know, our technology needs a lot of energy to operate it, and it is actually not um, applicable. It was not sustainable for the technology to be uh, operated in in those regions. So, we had to come up with uh, different solutions where. Um, the people could uh, filter the water with using technology with less energy uh, and less um, um, less uh, cost. So uh, the other um, options that we came up with was um, 
uh, gravity driven membrane system where we, we need a less energy, we just need the gravity, we need to just put it on very high up there so that it could, the gravity could pull down the water um, and it filters with that, uh, with gravity in fact. So, but we already see saw, um, some of the uh, previous projects that was undertaken by other implementation entities where um, they actually uh, set up our plants in, in the coastal areas. And we noticed that some of them were not working or it was not profitable. So it's just, uh, and also when it's broken, nobody can you know, come, come to all the way to the coastal area to fix that because it's uh, from the city area, it takes like five hours by, by car. And it's, the road is not even very, um, you know, clean or very <laughs> nice to uh, go. So it's, um, we saw that kind of a uh, number of pro problems. And when that's, that was why we realized that when we want to um, transfer a technology to these kind of developing countries, we actually need to uh, fully understand the exact situation of that local uh, area so that we can uh, come up with the right technology that is um, localized, that could be localized, and that could be operated and managed by the local people, and um, that it have some, it should have some kind of financing mechanism so that it could be uh, operated for a long term. And um, since I mentioned about the Bangladesh Fish Project, uh, there was another issue about this: um, how to uh, get the um, the cost for ONM. And uh, it was really hard to get the water fees from the local residents because they were very, uh, uh, they were people from the low income level. And um, so that we came up with the CDM, uh, we, we uh, registered the project as a CDM project. So once we come up with the, uh, once we uh, generate the carbon reductions, we can sell it to sell it as credits. And um, we could, with that profit, it was, uh, we put it into the ONM, and that project could, you know, go, uh, you know, maintain for a um, while with those that financing flow. So these kind of um, thinking is necessary when we try to transfer technology to the developing countries. I hope this answers your questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this. Nice answer for the question is really yeah, fully agreed. So, so we should consider developing countries uh, condition situations. So that is very important. Uh, one, one question to uh, Sung Jun Chan. So you are working in SME, small uh, startup companies. So a previous one panelist said approach design applications are very important. So you are I think application part. So do you have any, any a comment to Korean uh, government? So they, they I think when, when you see the carbon uh, neutral uh, policy and plan, I think SMEs are not well combined. So maybe in, in South Korea, SMEs are more than 96% in toy industry. So very important uh, joining the, the carbon neutrality plan. So do you have any, any uh, request or comment to Korean government or uh, committee? Yeah, it's a carbon neutrality committee in Korea. Yes, um, I think the most important thing uh, to the government, uh, my opinion is uh, just point of view, uh, the SME point of view. Frankly, a small and medium size enterprise that feel the uh, need to respond to climate change in a carbon uh, neutral way. Sadly. However, uh, the level of a pre prepared need uh, for responding to carbon neutrality is uh, very low, as you know. In particular, uh, there are many uh, difficulties in a low carbon transition 
uh, such as cost burden and lack of information due to low carbon transition. In addition, it is still unclear how SMEs will raise the pump to meet the new national carbon neutral law. And in fact, the purpose of the company is to pursue profit, you know, uh, but it is necessary to examine uh, how to achieve corporate profit while uh, realizing uh, carbon neutrality. And of course, the uh, current government is uh, prioritizing the carbon neutrality in national R&D investment now. Uh, you know, uh, continuously in investment in all industries uh, nowadays, such as uh, big data and machine learning and AI technology, uh, which has grown rapidly uh, in short periods of time, I think it is can uh, realize carbon neutrality for the SME. Uh, and uh, that's how uh, small a business as like me uh, can survive, right? Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's a. Uh... I fully agree you're saying. So we need more funding, research funding for big data and AI related with uh, carbon neutrality. Yeah, it's, uh, I fully agree with you're saying. And Artemi, you, you have any, any comment and maybe you can also have some comment on the panelist or presentations. Very much, Professor Kim. I think it was extremely uh, interesting uh, overview from from very different perspe perspectives. I wanted to ask one question, uh, but I think uh, uh, Miss Young already answered uh, to it partly. Uh, her example re related to Bangladesh it reminds me, you know, Bangladesh is in the board of the GCF, and uh, uh, and it's a very active member because um, very often, exactly because of the situation at its coastal areas it keeps on bringing up the issue of, um, uh, of the fact that, you know, uh, GCF's model and overall financing model uh, should be based on the grants and not loans because a lot of uh, challenges um, at the local level are simply not bankable and there's no uh, easy way around it. I think your, your very interesting CDM example is, uh, is very good uh, to uh, sort of to address this bankability challenge, uh, but it would be uh, it would be very interesting to uh, have any further ideas related to um, uh, to this issue of the bankability and the fact that in some communities, um, in some uh, areas, we will not be able to get uh, any bankable projects in the short term. And uh, my other question um, sort of based on different presentations um, is uh, is also related to uh, um, to the use of the ODA uh, in um, in R&D and uh, and in um, uh, technology transfer uh, more in general and I, and I can tell you that it's based on my uh, personal experience on my personal failure I worked on the microgrid project um, in uh, uh, you know uh, with uh, Nepal uh, the provincial government of Kyongsang Bukdo uh, tried to, well, it financed a, a sort of a project in the, in, uh, in the remote area uh, of Nepal. It was perfect for microgrid. And the initial idea was exactly technology transfer. Um, but uh, uh, we, were, we weren't able to, uh, to transfer technology. We were just able to implement the project and, and have the, the solar um, uh, sort of um, uh, photovoltaic uh, installed and uh, microgrid um, uh, sort of connected, uh, but, but we weren't able to go further. Um, I know that STEPI has been doing a lot of work on uh, um, ODA and R&D, uh, one of the few institutions globally that, that keeps on bringing this issue, sort of putting it on the radar. Uh, so, um, uh, or, um, you know, KISTEP also uh, brought up some very interesting points related to um, sort of how to, uh, to face this planning 
so I also wanted to ask the uh, panelists related to what could make a successful um, ODA project. Anyone who can answer <laughs> for his question? <laughs> I think the questions are very yeah. uh, difficult ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would like to answer to the first questions and maybe um, uh, Dr. Peck from <laughs> Steffi could <laughs> answer the second one. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> regarding, um, is there any other ways to make a bankable project in the areas, uh, really remote areas in the developed con developing countries? Um, uh, in fact, I know that many developing countries ask for, prefers in fact, grants rather than loans, as you just mentioned. And in some ways that is quite uh, reasonable and um, understandable. But at the same time, when I see, uh, for instance, I went, I had, I did uh, some projects in Kenya, Africa. As it's a pretty similar to Bangladesh, but well, the situations are totally different. But anyway, in the in the arid and semi-arid area, the water supply is very uh, limited, and we they asked for um, uh, installing water pumps and um, water pumps with using uh, renewable energy such as uh, solar um, thermal or small water turbine, I uh, wind turbine, and um, the problem was that it, the sustainable operation and management was the problem of those projects because in the previous years, the big uh, uh, um, grants um, donating, uh, donate, donating agencies such as like DANIDA or any other UN agencies or other like bilateral agencies already conducted a number of projects setting up those kind of uh, water pans or water pumps uh, with grant support. The problem was that the local uh, community people did not have any ownership about of that project when it's grant. So the long term in, in long term the operating ONM was always the problem. And uh, Kenya also asked us if there could be any uh, other solutions. Uh, to manage this kind of project. And uh, we came up with this uh, PPP small size, but PPP model where local government and the communities uh, of that project site could actually participate in those PPP models. And, um, and uh, they could also save some money as a, and make an endowment fund and that fund could, uh, in the later years, could support the ONM process. If there's any anything broken down, they could put some uh, money, take, take some money from the fund and then uh, repair it. That kind of, um, we made this kind of a financing mechanism and uh, suggested, to, suggested to Kenya and to secure some public funds of that PPP model, uh, we uh, developed a GCF project and it, it went to AFDB and AFDB is just uh, discussing it with the Ministry of Finance of uh, Minister, uh, National Treasury of Kenya. And um, I, I'm, I'm not sure where uh, it's going, how, what, what the actual current state is, but anyway, those kind of um, models could be, uh, it's not really uh, actually implemented yet, but uh, could be a solution. And um, we always think about PPP when we build a big, big road or like tunnels or that kind of stuff. But we can also apply this to this kind of small scale projects where local uh, local stakeholders could participate. So that's uh, that's one of my um, thoughts uh, for your comment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I think we have more time, right? So one, one question to uh, Dr. Choru Kim, you, you mentioned more, uh, you compared Chukuba and, and Santung and Daejeon, right? So Daejeon and Chukuba is a similar city. Also, I, I, I think the population will be a little bit different, but they two cities are more research uh, focused 
city, but Sandung is you mentioned more industrial uh, region. So do you have any vision to select the Sandung for your comparison research? Yeah. But, uh, there, there are many reasons for the, the Sandung uh, as a, as a, as a of the region. That is the uh, uh, Sandong region already have a, a lot of um, 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 uh, detection uh, from the, the fed as uh, so well because because of the Sandong and the region has uh, the sister city already. Yeah. So and uh, usually in Sandong and Zhejiang regionally uh, detection with the, the edu for the ed educational purpose and not 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 the, not not the, in the orange area but also if if um, um it 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 it, it, it just uh, my uh, thought and and if if the data and sound don't could could uh, improve or or making um, better um making more infection between the the, the, the two, two cities, cities it, it could be more uh, make a positive result from uh, 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 without the uh, education and not uh, uh, through through the, uh, uh, the, in the industrial and the R and D cooperation between two cities. So so I took the Sandong with the partner partner of the region, yeah, and. And also, I, I think I, I think the, 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 the it is it can be a more uh, a, a powerful connection between the Yukuba and the Zhejiang because it, it has a similar characteristic. So I think I think I, I think at first we we making we making the model between the Yukuba uh, and the Zhejiang, and then it uh, through, 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 through the first uh, uh, it, it, it experience after that, it, it could make the, the Sando and Tejan model after that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you, you are working in uh, the Machinery and Manufacturing Institute in Korea. So I'm very interested in which, uh, which industry can reduce the, you know, 20% carbon uh, amount or which industry, which manufacturing industry can reduce 50%, I don't know. So do you have any, any, uh, did you see any things about that or which industry is very hard to reduce? Which industry is very easy to reduce? So maybe we need this kind of separation approach. Any, you can answer it also other panelists where Artemi, you, you have, any answer maybe we can share about that? Okay, other other <laughs> Panelist or Artemi, you have a you, you know something about that. The only thing that comes to my mind, if I if I may, that uh, uh, it's really difficult, of course, to have the uh, the sectoral an analysis, right? And uh, and it's also important to have a territorial an analysis. Uh, there are some regions that can uh, that can reduce yeah. and, and already sort of make the commitments to reduce. These regions uh, make commitments because of they have certain industries. No, and uh, and perhaps this kind of territorial approach can be easier. Uh, okay, is there any any question from from floor there? Okay, yeah, it's this one. Yeah. Thank you for a wonderful um, session and um, preparing for the, this session uh, from Kim and GTC. So my name is Jerong Song from the Technology Center of Korea as a senior researcher. So. Uh, it is not a question. Just um, I answer for the uh, the, the first uh, presenter, so uh, Dr. Kim. 
So why Sandung was uh, selected uh, to the uh, three countries cooperation? You know why Sandung is uh, very close to uh, Yellow Sea. Means uh, many South Korean people think uh, the uh, fine dust uh, and the war uh, particular matter uh, is very uh, serious problem. So that means uh, from China. So Sandung is a uh, um, very industrialized uh, 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 states. So that's why we are uh, selected. Also, they are uh, sister, sisters' uh, uh, relations with the uh, Daejeon metropolitan city. And also the, uh, the, uh, no, no mayor, uh, governor is Li Ganjie. He, he was a former minister of environments in China. So it means uh, I was in NTCA National National Council on Climate and Environments. Um, there is uh, under the presidential office. So it's very important for the corporation. So which uh, states is a uh, 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 good uh, willingness for the cooperation with Korea and or uh, Japan. That's why we just uh, selected the uh, uh, Sandung province. And secondly, uh, Mr. John, who are winner uh, from the IFOBS. IFOBS is quite an uh, interesting program because why is celebrating for UN International Day of Clean Air for Blue Sky. It's uh, Korean, uh, South Korean government uh, uh, suggest to the UN uh, General Assembly. So finally, uh, two years ago, it's a UN uh, 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 day. Uh, first, firstly, for South Korean uh, suggested. So, so it is very important because uh, all the country in, on the UN member, uh, they uh, uh, accept and then agree for the, uh, making the uh, the day. So this year, second year for the, the, the day. So we need for the thinking of the uh, climate change. But this session is a name is uh, they need the uh, um, carbon neutral uh, forum something blah blah blah. But it's, it's quite problem for South Korean government because why uh, climate change not only for uh, carbon neutral problem. So it means that we should think about resolution and and uh, adaptation things. So. I think South Korean government is just focused on the more than uh, uh, carbon neutrality. So that's quite, I'm quite worrying about that. But so we do, and then after this forum, so think about our strategy for the cooperation and the in internationally. So I suggest you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Baek and Dr. Sorry, um, from the uh, key step. So for, uh, we we'll try to make some uh, uh, platform for R&D over uh, carbon neutrality, so we can continuously uh, to com uh, communication and for the making some strategy for the uh, national and then some uh, global global level. So thank you so much for the wonderful uh, forum. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for a nice comment and. Okay, I think we, sh we have to finalize uh, this special session and thank you for all um, presenters and also all uh, panelists. Please give him, her a warm round of applause. Yeah. Also, Spasibo Artemi, thank you for joining this special session and Hopefully we continue this kind of interesting forum later and hope to see you in face-to-face in, -face in Jeju or other place. Thank you. Yeah. 수고하셨습니다. 네, 감사합니다. 수고하셨습니다. 네, 감사합니다.